97.3 City FM. Relevant Radio. Always. As I was saying, you cannot be a leader of government business when you have no insight into the evolution of government's policies and programs. You need to be there to understand first and also to bring the perspectives of parliament to bear on the crafting of the policy, program, project, or whatever, right? And to be able to influence government policy in favor of the people. After all, you represent the people. So it is the reason. And then, of course, you do know that in Parliament, our own rules forbid a non-minister from leading government business in Parliament. So you saw the Honorable Barbie, you saw the Honorable Kumbo, you saw the Honorable um, Cletus Avoka, who were so much imperiled because they had been rendered naked. They could not, even ordinary laying of papers on behalf of government in the house, they couldn't do that. They had to go scampering for uh, deputy ministers to come and lay government paper on behalf of government. And I thought it was a huge embarrassment. In any event, as I say, the leader of government business supposed, and majority leader is supposed to lead his troops around a policy that he himself believes in, he himself uh, could trust, he himself is convinced about, he himself is persuaded by, to be able to rally his people around him. He is not part of it. How can he do that? So you don't need to be a cabinet minister, though, but should be part of the evolution of the processes, the policies, programs, everything, in order to have a firm understanding. And if, in your considered opinion, from the point of view of parliament, the executive is getting it wrong, and sometimes they do get it wrong, you will then be in a position to, you know, um, provide further and greater illumination to them. So I guess that is how it should be. It should not amount to any conflict of interest at all. 97.3 City FM. Relevant radio. Always.